Well, this morning, President Trump went after the Mueller witch hunt, tweeting, quote, the appointment of the special counsel is totally unconstitutional. Despite that, we'll play the game because I, unlike the Democrats, have nothing, have done nothing wrong. All right, here with all the legal commentary. Uh, I call him the great one. He's the host of CRTV's Levin TV, the host of Life, Liberty, Levin, the number one show on Sunday nights at 10 here on Fox News. The great one. All right. The idea that a president can be indicted, I want you to deal with that. I want you to deal with the idea of pardons. I want you to, because this is your wheelhouse, Mark. Uh, and the idea that the president's done anything wrong, I see you've got your papers and you are prepared, sir. Go. All right, number one, this indictment issue, the president can't be indicted according to the United States Department of Justice, the two memos that they put together. This has been the position of the Department of Justice for almost half a century. Mr. Mueller is an inferior employee in terms of the Department of Justice. He works for the Department of Justice, uh, and he must comply with the policies of the Department of Justice. So even putting aside the constitutional issue, he can't defy the Department of Justice and bring an indictment. I believe they already understand that because they watch your show. Constitutionally, we know he can't either because of the arguments laid out by Republican administration and Democrat administration. In other words, you can't cripple the president of the United States. He's the most powerful man in the federal government and expect him to have his due process constitutional rights properly defended at the same time. No president's been indicted, and there's a reason for that. No president's ever been brought before a federal grand jury, and there's a reason for that. Perhaps Mr. Mueller is the one who is the tyrant, not the president of the United States. Now, the appointments clause of the Constitution. President Trump didn't write that. Last time I checked, the framers wrote it, and it was ratified by all the states. The defect here is not that every special counsel's appointment is unconstitutional. Every special counsel's appointment is not unconstitutional. This special counsel's appointment is unconstitutional because the deputy attorney general, Mr. Rosenstein, hasn't uh, educated himself about the appointments clause. He does not have the power to substitute his will for the president and the Senate. The president nominates principal officers to, to the United States Senate, and the Senate must confirm. Assistant attorneys general, assistant uh, uh, United States attorneys, assistant secretaries, and up. The problem is Mr. Rosenstein conferred so much power onto this special counsel. No specific criminal statutes, no specific individuals, really, and his oversight is so passive and so limited as he promised he would keep his hands off of Mr. Mueller that he's created an unconstitutional special counsel. And I, and I believe if the president challenges that, that one day, he will be successful. Now, the pardon power. You know this memo they keep referring to on Capitol Hill, Mr. Schumer, of all people, it's two and a half pages long. It's page one, page two, page three. See my X's? Those are the irrelevant parts of the memo that have nothing to do with what's going on today. See the circle? That's it. And there's one sentence in this whole thing. Under the fundamental rule that no one may be a judge in his own case, it would seem that the question should be answered in the negative. That is, whether President can uh, pardon himself. This is not a legal document. This is a joke. Do you see all the footnotes here? There aren't any. You see all the case law here? There isn't any. It's a novel question because no president's ever been indicted. So why are we even discussing this pardon power? Because the Washington, excuse me, the New York Times, uh, one of their reporters in one of the highlighted sections of their phony article based on the leaked letter puts in there, is the president saying that he can pardon himself? Of course the president can pardon himself. Here's the language in the Constitution, Article 2, Section 2. The president has the power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in cases of impeachment. Do you hear anything there that says, except in the case of the president? All these protections are built into our Constitution to protect our Constitution, to protect the president from the mob, from the media, from the Democrats that are a mob today. They're here to protect him. It's not the president who's violating the Constitution. It's the media who want the Constitution violated. It's the Democrats who want the Constitution violated. It's Mueller and his merry band of Democrat prosecutors who are tipping around a constitutional confrontation. As I've said here, every time I've been on your show, Sean, the Constitution is the president's friend. And I'm speaking rather slowly so even Joe Scarborough can comprehend what I'm saying. Or even Chris <laughs> Cuomo can comprehend what I'm saying. 
The president is in this position because of what Mr. Rosenstein did. He created an unconstitutional monster who is threatening to bring the president in front of a federal grand jury, which is unconstitutional and has never been done, with this notion of obstruction of justice when he exercises his prerogatives as president because they want to indict him, which has never been done. The only way to remove a president of the United States is the old-fashioned way, through the Senate, and that's it. And so it's not the president who is the thug, it's Mr. Mueller who's the thug. It's not the president who's the incompetent, it's Mr. Rosenstein who's the incompetent. And they can mock the president and his attorneys all they want. If they show up in the Supreme Court, I'm betting that the president and his attorneys win. And you are saying the Constitution is on the president's side and he needs to take it and his attorneys need to take it all the way. Last point. I am saying, whether it's the appointments clause, or the pardon power, or the issue of indicting a president of the United States, he is right on on his tweets, and he's making the people who are criticizing him look like fools. I would say this, and I've said it before, where the hell is the United States Congress? The Republicans control it. They need to hold hearings. They need to ask Mr. Rosenstein why he didn't recuse himself since he recommended that Comey be fired. They need to ask Mr. Mueller about those memos out of the Justice Department. They need to ask Mr. Mueller. What authority he has to drag a president in front of a federal grand jury or subpoena him? What authority does he have to even contemplate indicting you know, a president? And how is it that he hasn't violated the appointments clause of the Constitution? Congress has a role for crying out loud. In their Article One, they were created first in the Constitution. We, they don't have to sit back and watch all this. They need to get involved in it. All right, that's why I call you the great one. Um, Mark, so important we get this right. We've, our constitutional republic depends on it. You can see him Sunday nights. Don't miss it. Watch Mike's uh, Mark show, Life, Liberty, Levin, every Sunday. Number one show on cable right here on Fox.